All summer long, we have been talking about faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. See, we can put our faith in God because we know He is trustworthy. We can focus on the world around us and see what God has made. We can take a closer look and see how He's worked in our lives, in the lives of our friends and our family, in the lives of people all throughout history. That helps us trust in Him. And for today's game, guys, we have a classic game of pig. So we're gonna get into this game right now. So our game today is really simple. We're gonna play a variation of the game pig. Uh, if you miss three times and you spell the words P-I-G pig, then you are out. But instead of each contestant copying the other person's shot, I'm gonna give them a list of shots, and if they miss, they get a letter. So we're gonna do, do a total of six shots, and whoever's still left at the end, uh, how? <laughs> will be the winner! Let's play! All right, John, you ready? Yeah. And action. Shot two, this dot. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Nate, you gotta pee. Let's go. Next shot is uh, this purple dot right there. That's yellow. No, that's that one? that one right there. Oh, this one? Yeah, that dot. Ah. Oh, so close. Oh! <laughs> Where'd it go? Oh! That was an impressive shot. You pick the next dot for right. shot number four. Right, right here. That green dot? Yep, right, right here. Alright, green dot. John, is that PI? That's a uh, P.I.? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm a pig. Nate, wait, that's P.I.G.? I'm yep. a pig, bro. All right, Nate's out. Uh, everyone wave goodbye to Nate. Bye. Bye, Nate. All right, so all of you guys have P.I. Nate is out. This is what we're going to do. You guys are going to have to shoot from the tech booth. Nope. Not you hit the air conditioner. No way I'm not gonna hit that. Go for it. All right, we're gonna do a new shot. <laughs> yeah. Next shot, you have to stand on the stage and shoot it from behind. Right. Ah, oh, nope. That didn't happen. Ooh. Oh. Tyler, this could win it. Let's oh. go! <laughs> Let's go! With the dub. All right, guys, so the winner of today's game is Tyler. Good job, Tyler. The game is over. Let's go worship. <laughs> ah! Everybody, get on your feet. This is time for us to show honor and give thanks to our God. Let's give him all that we've got today. Come on, sing. Shoot me down, 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 down. I'm bulletproof because of you, because of you. And now I'm bulletproof because of you, because of you. You love me away, now I'm not afraid. No matter what the world may say or what. Because 
got this whole thing under control My soul is untouchable Because you've already won me My victory is not in this flesh and bone It's in the cross and I know Nobody's taking it from me I got my armor now No fear, no doubt Can't shoot me down, yeah I got my armor now No fear, no doubt Gonna shoot me down, 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 down What we say with our mouth can help to make our faith stronger. Our words are powerful. Let's use our words to speak life. Let's speak what we know is true about our God. Sing this with me.
guys, today we have a really fun science experiment for you that involves one of your favorite things, dancing. Today we're making dancing rice, and here's how you make it. You'll need a jar to hold water, water, distilled vinegar, instant rice, food coloring, baking soda, and a spoon. So what you'll do is you'll start by adding about three-fourths of the way full with water in your container. Next, what you'll do is you can mix in your food coloring. Now, you will take a tablespoon of baking soda and mix it into the water. Take your spoon and mix it around really good until it dissolves. Now what you'll do is you'll take a fourth of a cup of instant rice and add it into the mixture. And then you will take about two to three tablespoons of distilled white vinegar and add that in as well. Now you can watch the reaction. And that is how you make dancing rice. Your social media challenge this week is to make dancing rice at home. Try to play with the measurements a little bit and see what kind of reaction you get. Remember to tag us in your videos and pictures so we can join in on all the fun with you. We'll see you next time. How does your favorite story end? Wait, first, how does your favorite story begin? In a world where a kid who has something to learn, something to discover, this kid finds unexpected friends. They head out on an adventure and face some tough challenges. Then when things are the darkest, when all hope seems lost, something, someone, comes through to save the day. And everyone celebrates! Now, Think about this. We are hardwired to love stories because each one of us is living one. We're all human and we all make mistakes. But sometimes the road ahead can be so rough, we don't know how to fix the problems we face. But we do know the times we've seen God at work. We know he sent a hero right into the middle of our story, God's own son, Jesus. And we know that when we follow Jesus, God promised an ending more incredible than anything we can imagine. Wherever we go, he goes with us too. When we live out our story with hope and faith, others can see God at work in us. That's why faith is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Let's jump right into our story today. It's about a man we've talked about a lot this summer. You know, Paul. Paul used to be someone who tried to stop people from believing in Jesus, but then he put his faith in Jesus and he's never been the same. He spent the rest of his life sharing the good news of Jesus and encouraging believers in different churches. To tell this story today, I need a little help from some of our friends. Paul was always telling people about Jesus, but this made some people really angry. Paul was beaten up and made fun of, thrown in jail, and even ran out of town. But while Paul was in prison, something amazing happened. Jesus himself appeared to Paul in prison. Jesus said, be brave. You have told people about me in Jerusalem. You must do the same in Rome because a group of Jewish leaders were out to get him. Paul was moved to see the governor in a place called Caesarea. Paul asked the governor if he could travel to Rome to stand trial before Caesar. The governor agreed. That meant that Paul was in for a pretty long journey at sea. For the journey across the sea, Paul was handed over to a Roman commander named Julius. They were probably in a bigger boat, but you get the picture. Julius allowed Paul to visit with some of his friends when they stopped in Sidon. From there, 
Paul and Julius sailed around Cyprus, but they joined up with people who were carrying grain from Italy. The ship fought against the wind for many days until they arrived in a town on an island. But the weather had gotten bad and sailing had become dangerous. Paul tried to warn the pilot and the ship's owner that it was too dangerous to set sail, but the sailors wanted to reach a better harbor for the winter, so they sailed on anyway. The sailors wanted to set sail again. They didn't listen to Paul's warning. Soon, that gentle wind grew until it had the force of a hurricane. Paddle for your lives, Paul and Julius said. The sailors lifted the lifeboat on board and tied ropes under the ship to hold it together. They threw cargo overboard. They did anything they could do to save the ship and the people on it. In the midst of the storm, God sent an angel to Paul. The angel said, do not be afraid. Paul, you must go on trial in front of Caesar. God has shown his grace by sparing the lives of all those sailing with you. The next morning, Paul encouraged everyone on the ship. They were 276 people in all. Paul told the people that they needed to run the ship on the island. On the 14th night of the storm, the sailors realized that they were near land. The ship's crew was so afraid of crashing against the rocks that they started planning an escape. Paul spoke to the commander and the soldiers, saying the men must stay with the ship. So the soldiers cut the ropes and held the lifeboat and let it drift away. Just before dawn, Paul tried to get them to eat so that they could have strength. He told them the good news that he had heard from the angel and that they would all survive. Paul took some bread. He thanked God for the bread and he broke it. Then they all ate. The crew decided to run the ship onto the beach. The ship hit a sandbar underwater and it started to break apart. The soldiers had planned to kill Paul and the other prisoners to keep them from getting away. But Julius stopped them because he wanted to save Paul's life. Some of the people swam and some grabbed pieces of the ship. God protected everyone on the ship. They entered a swarm and held the pieces together. All of them reached land safely. Whew. The island was called Malta, and the people who lived there built a fire to welcome their visitors. Paul was gathering sticks for the fire, and you'll never believe what happened next. A snake bit him. Poor Paul. He shook the snake into the fire. The people couldn't figure out why Paul wasn't harmed by the snake, because it was venomous. They decided that he must be a god. The chief official on the island welcomed Paul and the others into his home. Paul found out that a man's father was very sick, so Paul prayed and asked God to heal him. After Paul prayed, the official's father was well. The official was so happy that he did this. Okay, he didn't actually raise the roof, but you get the idea. All of the sick people on the island came to see Paul, and they too were healed. It was time to leave, and the people of Malta gave Paul and all the others all the supplies that they needed. After lots of sailing, Paul finally reached Rome. The followers of Jesus there had heard he was on the way, and they traveled to meet him. In Rome, Paul was allowed to live in a home while, they wa while he was watched by guards. For two years, he welcomed anyone who came to see him. He shared the good news of Jesus with Jewish and non-Jewish people, just like God had promised he would. Paul faced a lot of trouble along the way. Some of the problems that he faced was downright scary. I'm sure he never planned on being shipwrecked or bitten by that snake. But knowing Jesus changes the way you see your problems. Even though things didn't go the way Paul wanted, he chose to have faith and trust in God. Let's pray and ask God to help us do that too. Dear God, it's so cool to see how Paul chose to trust you no matter what. He went through so many difficult things, but he kept his faith in you along the way. We know that when we trust you, it changes the way we see our problems. Please help us to be strong when we have to face difficult things, because we know it's worth it to live your way. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We can praise God on the good days and when things are hard. Worshiping Him is something we can do over and over again. No matter what you're going through, remember these words from Romans 8:28. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. He appointed them to be saved in keeping with his purpose. Let's sing this together. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. And you have been so, so good to me. Before I 
I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. And you have been so, so kind to me. Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. that we know that Jesus can help us change the way we see our problems and that we can help others with their problems as well. We're going to talk about it a little bit more with some discussion questions. Let's start with an icebreaker. Oreos wants to make a new flavor cookie. What flavor would you create? Question two, Paul had to be put on a ship with a lot of people and they sailed to many different places. What did he do while on the ship?
Question three. On the island of Malta, Paul was bitten by a snake. What happened to him? God is in control of every part of our lives, even the biggest challenges. That was certainly true for Paul and it's true for us too. We can all have problems, but just like Paul who was confident that God was with him, we can be too. See, Paul was determined to continue to do what God had called him to do, and that was to share the good news about Jesus. Because Paul trusted God, he could face his problems head on without worry. Nothing could stop him not even trials, shipwrecks, or snakes. Paul understood that Jesus is the one whose God's story was all about. He had faith that Jesus really is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. He understood that no matter what problems he faced, they were worth it for him to share about Jesus. That's what we need to do. Trust God and remember that he is with us. Even when we face problems in life, when we do that, it changes things because knowing Jesus changes the way you see your problems. So if you're going through a hard time at school and you feel like you're alone, remember that Jesus is with you. When you're sick or you get hurt, remember that Jesus is with you. When a friend moves away or you lose someone you care about, remember that Jesus is with you. Knowing Jesus is a powerful gift that helps us see our problems in a new way. We can have faith in Him, even when things just aren't going the way they, we want them to. Remember that our memory verse says, God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. You see, Jesus is the best gift we've ever been given. He can change the way we see our problems and give us the courage to face anything. Well guys, it's been an awesome time learning about faith together, but we will see you again next week.